So in this segment, we're going to be discussing um, Ash Sarkar calling um, Jeremy Hun and uh, Rishi Sunak a crisis management team, which is pretty funny. This line about the coalition of chaos uh, that's beginning to be resurrected from the 2015 election, which seemed to work against Ed Miliband, do you think that will work as an attack line this time? With the coalition of chaos thing as well, like... It doesn't make sense because Labour won. I don't think Labour were on course to win a majority back in 2015, and so they would have needed a coalition partner. Whereas, whereas right now, um, it looks like they're very much on for a majority. So it doesn't make sense. I don't think it will. I mean, when I saw the Tories going with that line, I really felt like, oh God, my time machine works. It's just taken us back um, nearly a decade. It shows you how little the Conservative Party has managed to move on and, and get with the times. In some ways, I feel kind of sorry for Rishi Sunak because him and Jeremy Hunt aren't... I don't feel sorry for him. ...really a government at all. They're a crisis management team with a parliamentary wing and they were sort of brought in to try and clean up the mess caused by Liz Truss. The awful truth is that it's not just Rishi Sunak's fault and it's not just Liz Truss's fault either. The Conservatives have been on a downward trend in terms of polling since December 2021, so that's under Boris Johnson. And it's since then that you guys have been lurching from crisis to crisis and you haven't had any animating purpose or vision or strategy. And, I th and yeah, that, that, that's true. He has kind of lurched from, you know, five goals and whatever else he set out because I think he's kind of, he's rudderless. There's no, the economy is really cooked. Let's be honest now, the culture war stuff isn't working. Um, the Rubanda scheme, like he's trying to get that through. There's nothing There's nothing left for him to really do, I think, because he doesn't have the, I think, the political support by having a big majority to, to get much done. You know, the party are calling for massive tax cuts. You got the polls saying, you know, they don't want tax cuts. People don't want tax cuts. They want um, better funded public services. Um, it's just there's no... The, they just like they don't know how to how to get things moving and they're kind of stuck so i kind of do agree with the analysis that um they are a bit of a crisis management team and they're not managing it very well here they're really not i think that this idea that it could be saved by a different leader that's for the birds i think the idea that suella braverman is um pained by having to go on tv and stick the boot in also for the birds um also saved saved by who like which leader they haven't got the they haven't got the talent i don't know if there's a politician in the world who'd be talented enough to save this lot i'll be honest because it's such a mess you know they're celebrating i think like 0 0.6 percent like growth and trying to say we're the fastest growing economy now it's like you've been stagnant you've been stagnant for like a lot for, for a good few years now a good few years um went into technical recession like the way the growth statistics are done is so dumb because it's it's based on quarter on quarter. That doesn't really make sense. Should be looking at it more like annually and things like that. Um, and so, you know, you got them arguing, oh, we're the fastest growing economy. And it's like, no one cares because no one's feeling the benefit of it. Like, it's just kind of, it, it's that bad. Like, even if they did get, you know, even 1% growth and they, they can celebrate it, like people don't care because they're not feeling the benefit of that growth. Or the only thing people can see is bills going up, um, food going up, work not really paying that much you know not getting a ton of pay rises let's be honest uh mortgages going up rents going up like the cost of living is just that bad that you know even if you had one percent growth no one would care um i well, really well, don't well, see well, a, well, a do way see? forward well, for well, actually, uh, I, I agree with the middle bit of what you were just saying there about the fact that is uh, you know that is about vision it's about narrative it's about tying these things through uh to talk about is the there time the is there world. time and is anyone Possib listening look, possibly not and possibly not uh the other paul, paul scully the the person being interviewed here i think he did make some remarks about no-go zones or something um a month or two ago and then he had to pull back on it because when he was asked about it he goes oh i don't know and you know this guy has been wrapped kind of into or dragged into the culture war to back his party and he had no idea what the hell he was talking about that's how bad the situation is like they've manufactured a culture war that makes zero sense and the people who are waging this culture war are completely clueless completely clueless the honest answer to those and, and that's what it is like they don't know if they can do it it's, it's kind of nuts when you think about it so yeah you know i kind of do agree with ash saying that they are a crisis management team. It's just the problem is the crisis is that big and the lack of talent is that much that they've got no chance in dealing with it. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.